Hey there, everybody. If you've watched some of my previous videos, you know that I'm a total DeWalt junkie. I got no shame about it. I like their tools. I like them as a company. But there's a bit of a problem. There's some tools they just don't make. And I'm not about to let the huge collection of DeWalt batteries I have go to waste or have to build up another collection of batteries for a different tool brand so that I can work while I'm out on the road. So today we're going to be making this adapter. This will let me use any DeWalt 20 volt battery with any 18 volt Ryobi tool. Just like this. So let's get to it and I'll show you how this one's built. First thing we need to do is take apart a battery from our Target tool brand. In this case, it's a Ryobi 18 volt battery that's junked. I got it out of the recycling bin at Home Depot. You just have to ask and normally they'll let you steal one. You'll see this little button here that they've put on there for warranty reasons. Just get rid of it. And now open up your battery. There you go. Now we have the cells that are inside the Ryobi battery and we need to just get rid of all of that. They're just in with some adhesive. And now we need to remove the cells from the battery. So in order to do that, you'll see a couple very small wires in there. And you just cut those off the Ryobi board. Now what we have are red and black, and that's positive negative, and this blue wire which connects on the board to a resistor that's grounded, I believe. And that resistor allows the charger to know what kind of battery this is. We don't care about that, so we're just gonna tuck that wire out of the way. Now we have the DeWalt 20 volt to 18 volt adapter. And we're gonna use this to interface with our batteries. This is a knockoff one, because I wanna see if this works. In this example, I used an actual genuine DeWalt one, um, they appear pretty similar. So we'll see how that works. Yeah, that's what you get for eBay junk. The screw just breaks. All right. And they've hidden a screw right there. And there's one on this side too. Ugh. All right, so I've got the screws out of this now and it should come apart. There we go. Comes loose. There we go. So the way these adapters work is that connector connects to the battery and then you have this board in here with some logic on it. And this board's job is to monitor the battery so you don't run it too low, uh, get it too hot, any of that. Uh, and this is the piece that we really need to make the whole adapter work. So there's a screw right here on this little knockoff. I don't know if it's on the original. I'm gonna take that out and this whole piece falls through. We don't need this top part, so save it for some other project. Now what you have here is a standard 18 volt connector with positive negative. And we're gonna check the polarity there. And this is, this is it. You could also do this with a broken drill or any other tool. Every DeWalt tool is gonna to have this sort of board in the bottom of it. This is obviously a knockoff, uh, but they all have a board just like this in the bottom of them. You could use any broken tool. I didn't have a broken tool, so I bought the adapter. So after an exhaustive 30 second search in my shop, I can't find one of my multimeters. So. I've grabbed a piece of 12 volt LED uh, strip lighting and we're gonna test it this way. Okay, so the front is positive. And just to confirm, we'll plug it in backwards. No light. So that tells us the front wire here is the positive wire. And that's also the wire that's insulated right there. So now we'll take this off the battery so it's not super scary. There we go. So the whole goal here is to mate the two of these together like that so that the 18 volts that this board's putting out, because it's expecting just to go to a DeWalt tool that wants 18 volts, is instead going to a Ryobi tool 
that wants 18 volts. And the whole reason that we can do this is that when DeWalt switched over to 20 volts from their 18 volt line, the, the tool, okay, for a lithium ion battery, you need some logic to protect the battery from getting blown up or burned out or killed or whatever you want to call it uh, by you running it too low or charging it too high. In DeWalt tools, they've put that logic in this board right here. So every tool has the logic in it and the batteries don't. And the idea behind that is that you're going to own more batteries than tools. So it makes the batteries cheaper to make. You know, that extra dollar or whatever it is is in the cost of the tool instead of in the cost of the battery. Now Ryobi, when they switched over to lithium ion, kept the same form factor. So you can take old nickel cadmium cells or batteries and put them in the exact same tools as lithium ion tools. So this same logic has to be in the battery. So when we take this out and use this logic, we're still protecting the cell, but the, the tool itself doesn't have a way to talk to the battery in these older tools and say, hey, are you a real Ryobi battery? So it just, it just works. Now, if you tried to do this, for example, um, take a DeWalt battery and put it in a new Milwaukee or Makita tool, it wouldn't work because the tool is going to talk to the battery and, you know, there, there's some handshake there that happens that tells the tool that it's got a genuine battery and the battery has, you know, the battery's charged and it's not over temperature and blah, 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 blah. We're getting around that because Ryobi doesn't have that same mechanism. The battery itself protects itself instead of the tool talking to the battery. So we're doing an end run around all that protection with this little board here. We'll snip off the wires here that we don't need. We're going to have to take them out to to strip them. These are a little bit different. These knockoff boards are a little bit different than the real DeWalt ones. So we've gotten the positive wire out of its little insulated sheath. There we go. We've stripped it. Do the same thing to the ground. Now on the Ryobi battery, we're going to do the exact same thing. All right. This wire is real short, so there we go. Now for this housing to be nice and pretty, what we want to do is put these back together, stick this, oh, take these stupid things out, we don't need them anymore. There we go. We want this to mate right onto the bottom of the battery, the Ryobi battery. And you could make this a little bit more compact, you could 3D print something, but why? It doesn't matter. So in order to do that, we've got to see where this board's going to sit. It lives right about there. We've got to cut out a big hole right here. Don't cut past these little nubs right here. So those are what hold on the springs that let this plug into a tool. Okay, so you put the adapter up through here like it's going to be in real life. And we look at whether or not these wires are long enough. And they are, but that would be just a miserable job to try and get that soldered together. Make that opening a little bit bigger. Oh my god, this isn't on. No! <gasps> no! Yeah. And we need to connect black to black, red to red right here. Uh, that's gonna be a heck of a job to try and do at this angle. So what I'm gonna do is make this hole big enough that I can slot this piece down through it after everything gets soldered together. So that just means making it just a little bit wider right there. We'll jump over to the die grinder for that. All right, so now that this can be fed through that hole, like so, 
we're gonna solder the pieces together on this side. And we're just gonna go black to black, red to red. Get some heat shrink for protection there. So now have your helper come in with the third hand with the solder. Grab that and just feed it onto the joint. Okay, well that looks kind of like crap, but it will get the job done. Put the heat shrink on there. Shrink the heat shrink with a couple light passes of a torch. It didn't pretty, but it didn't go on anywhere either. So that'll do the trick. So to confirm that everything's working as it should be, let's stick this back on a battery like that. Grab our crappy multimeter, and there you go, and it works. So now we need to feed all these pieces back through the Ryobi housing. We also need to reassemble the Ryobi spring clips right here, and that's gonna require just a hint of epoxy. Just gonna put a dot on the big pin on either side of these spring clippy things don't cover the whole thing or else it won't be a spring anymore all right i'll give that five minutes to set up all right so it's been about 10 minutes that epoxy set up so now we're going to reassemble the ryobi battery put in the battery clips so there's the ryobi battery now we've got to reassemble the dewalt adapter piece now, before we mash the two of these together and then epoxy the heck out of it, what we're gonna wanna do is just fill that all up with hot glue so it doesn't move around. We'll put a little bit of hot glue right in here just to hold it together while the epoxy sets up. And we're just gonna mash that together like that. And let the hot glue set. Okay. So now we come in here and we're just gonna fill this thing up with epoxy along the edges. However you do, don't get epoxy in there because then it won't clip into your Ryobi tools. Just work your way around the tool, getting epoxy everywhere. All right, now if you're like me and you didn't line it up straight, this is your last chance to fix that. There you go. Now let that set. Just make sure the epoxy does not get into these battery clips like it was right there. All right, get it out. You got to keep rotating this as well. Uh, just so the epoxy doesn't flow into any one spot where you really don't want it. Now while we wait for this to dry, I'll give you a little shop tour. This is the project I'm working on right now. It's a... Uh, bench to match some other ones that I restored. Uh, this is a new, pro new piece and there'll be two more of them as well by the time this project's done. Stick around, subscribe if you want to see these when they're done. That video will be coming out probably middle of March. All right, so we've been sitting in this clamp here for oh, about 10, 12 minutes. The five minute epoxy is set up. There we go. Let's grab a battery. Moment of truth. Perfect. So that is how you make an adapter from a DeWalt 20 volt battery to a Ryobi 18 volt one plus battery. The same process should work with any of the new tool lines that have come out. I believe Milwaukee's M18 and the new Makita batteries should be able to be made to be used on old Makita tools, Ryobi 18 volt tools, and heck, probably a bunch of other ones. Um, this same process will also work definitely from DeWalt 20 volt to old, um, 
light duty tool brands that you can't get batteries for anymore. Like some of the black and Decker yard tools or and any of those. I don't, I don't know the other brands. I'm a DeWalt guy. Uh, but if you have tools that you can't make, that you can't get batteries for anymore and you still have a dead battery, um, that's nickel cadmium, this will do the trick.